Okay, today's pop post is for my good friend Kelly Booth. Okay, so Kelly has been on my design team for years and beyond just being on my design team, she's just one of my best friends. I love her. She is an amazing talent. She, her ability with those Copic markers, I, I, I'm just in awe every everything that she makes. But more importantly than that, she's just a really wonderful person. She's lovely to be around. She has such a kind heart. You know, she's very generous. My goodness, she always gives me such great jewelry as gifts. And then, you know, when people compliment me, I say, oh, thank you. I have very good taste in friends. Uh, but anyway, so Kelly, she just recently went to CHA with me. I'm actually hoping that she's going to come visit me next month here in Texas. And uh, we're going to actually play with figuring out some of these videos together. But in the meantime, I just wanted to send her a card. Okay, so what does Kelly love? Kelly loves coffee. Kelly loves her puppy, Sassy. She's got a new puppy. Um, Kelly loves owls and her favorite color is like a teal color. So somehow among all of that, I'm gonna figure out a cool combination for a card for Kelly. So step one was to draw a rough sketch. I wasn't for sure what I was going to do, but I knew it would involve the spiral circle pull card. Wanted to have some coffee cups on there, maybe some beans on the spiral. Wasn't totally sure. The other piece of inspiration, of course, was Kelly's puppy, Sassy. So for her, what I did is I just printed out a photo of Sassy. Kelly loves coffee, so I knew I wanted to use the new coffee bean embossing folder. And I wanted to use that, of course, on brown cardstock, so I'd have brown beans. But she also loves the color teal. So I'm taking a brayer and putting a generous amount of teal acrylic paint onto the side of the embossing folder that has the depressed beans. Then what I can do is just get my brown cardstock into the folder, emboss it using my die cutting machine. What it'll do is it'll transfer the paint to the background of the brown. So the beans will stay mostly brown because there wasn't any paint inside those bean areas, but the background will turn into that cool teal color. And then I just repeated the process so I'd have two. I cut two pattern paper cups using the cup pop stand die, highlighted the edges with ink, and then for Sassy, I just used a craft knife along her chin line. Now what I'm gonna do with Sassy is I'm gonna glue her up behind the cup and get her chin tucked to the front of the cup. Any adhesive would do, but I'm just gonna go ahead and use glue for this. I went rooting through my washi tape drawer looking for something that would be suitable as a detail stripe across the cup and I came across this which is duck brand fabric tape. So that was just the perfect color. So I'm just taking my Elizabeth Craft Designs detail fine pointed scissors into the areas where I need to remove the tape. And I'm just going to repeat that same exact process for the other cup. The pull card rule is you add three inches to the width. So if you want an A2 card, which is four and a quarter by five and a half when you're done, you need to start with seven and a quarter by five and a half. I scored the cardstock in the middle for folding, and then all I'm going to do is line up my pull card die using the alignment nubs right over the fold of that card. Now that can be lined up anywhere along the fold. I'm going to pretty well center it top to bottom but you could have chosen to put that higher, lower, anywhere along the fold. Just use the nubs to line it up. I like to use a temporary removable tape to hold the die in place while I'm die cutting. Make a sandwich for your machine for a wafer thin die and roll it through like usual. Then you can just take the die right off the piece and now it's ready for training. Training the pull cards could not be more simple. You just fold in the middle again and then just back fold around the circle. That's it. It's just a simple little pull card, little Z fold card. When you want to keep it closed, you can use the little integrated tuck slots. There's one at the top and one on the bottom on this particular die. When you want to open it, you still just pull. One of my newest die sets is called the pull card edges. And these edges are designed to fit all three of the pull cards in the Pop It Ups collection. So I'm gonna use these edges on my card today and I'll use them with the coffee bean paint texture that I made earlier. Now the die is not quite as tall as the piece that I was starting with, so I will need to just finish it out with scissors. But after that, I can attach this to my card. And the simplest way is just to add the glue to the card, making sure I, I leave a little bit of a wider berth around the die cut area, because that's gonna leave a little shadow with the pull card edges. Now here's what I mean by a little shadow. I'm gonna line up the ends with the fold of the card and you can see there's about an eighth of an inch difference between the circle in the pull card edges and the circle in the card. So it gives you that nice little shadow. Brayer can be really helpful for helping you seal it. 
since my piece is so much bigger, it's going to be really easy just to flip the card over and cut it down to size. So the simplest way to use the pull card edges is to cut your pattern paper or whatever your decorator piece is wider and longer than the panel you're trying to cover. Use the pull card edge, glue it on, trim it down to size. You also, of course, have the option to add a little border. You just would have had to do that before you glued it down. Now I'm going to use the scalloped edge on the other background that I made. And once again, my die is just a little shorter than the piece that I started with, so I'll just need to use the scissors to finish out the edge. Now a cool feature of that scalloped border is that the scallops themselves are the exact same size as the tuck slots on all three pull cards. So you can glue them in such a way that they will cover the tuck slots to decorate them, but that the tuck slots are still operational. Once again, I'm just going to turn the piece over after gluing it down and trim it down to fit. And I'll give just a little extra attention to the end scallops, the one at the very top and the one at the very bottom, just making sure that those are glued down really solid so that when I bend the card to lift the tuck slot up and over that it doesn't try and lift both those scallops. I figured out a location I liked for the cup for the front of the card. Just used some temporary tape to hold it in place and then added glue to the back and then pressed it down really well and took off the tape. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the spiral die from the spiral circle pull card set to die cut right down through that cup and that card. Since I was die cutting through several layers, I did roll it back through the machine a couple times to make sure I got good pressure against that spiral. And now I'm just going to carefully lift it off the die, making sure it die cut all the way through, which it did. And now I've got that beautiful spiral cut into my front coffee cup. And in the closed position, the spiral is going to be closed, so it will look like a complete cup. What I wanted to do is add the solid coffee cup, the one with Sassy in it, inside the card so that it is hidden. So I need to make sure that when I glue this inside the card, I'm paying attention to the location so that the handle from the cup on the front of the card will completely cover the handle for the one on the inside of the card. So I'm just kind of doing this by lining up one underneath the other. It's got glue on the back, then I can press it really well. And now I've added my coffee cup inside the card. I had not considered that my glue wouldn't stick to that fabric tape, so I'm switching now to zip dry glue because I knew that would do it. So I've added the glue to the center of the spiral, then I'm going to close the card against that exposed adhesive, get in there and hold that until it sets up, and that will attach the spiral inside the card. Normally this would be a much quicker process. For me it was just because I'd used fabric tape that I had to really hold it to set that glue. I cut the spoon die that comes with the cup pop stand out of a silver paper and then I just wove it through the handle and glued it into place so that it's attached to the front cup so when the card is open the spoon moves as well. I also die cut some red hearts from the spiral circle set, added one to the spiral, one to the front of the card. I am noticing my spiral coming through the hole to the front of the card. I'm not crazy about that. So I think the way I'm going to fix it is I'm going to add a window pane to the card. So the die set comes with a circle die. I'm going to go ahead and die cut that out of just some leftover clear packaging material. I just need to cut a slit on one side. Then I can weave that from the inside of the card. The slit goes around the end of the spiral right there. And now I've got a window pane. What's nice about that is it will prevent the spiral from popping through the hole to the front of the card. So you'll get a nicer open. I should mention that that heart on the front of the card is only attached to that upper part of the spiral, not to both parts of the spiral. The spiral still needs to open. I also used a heart inside the card where the window pane is so I'd have a place to glue that down. The hello comes from the rectangle accordion and I also added some coffee beans that come from the cup pop stand die set. And of course I want to engage my tuck slots before I mail it so that I don't get an accidental reveal when Kelly pulls it out of the envelope. There was a little space on the inside of the card that I could have written a personal greeting, but I decided I'm actually going to use the back of the card to write my note to Kelly. And I also wanted to stamp it with my little Made in Texas stamp and sign my name. You were worried I forgot about owls. I didn't. I put an owl on the back of the envelope and I found this little greeting that says, I'll meet you in Texas for when Kelly comes to visit. So I got all four of her words into between the card and the envelope. It is just a standard A2. It's very flat. It will mail for a single stamp. 
These pop post videos are a little different for me. This is not just me teaching how to use a die. This is me choosing somebody in my life and crafting a card for them, you know, specialized for that person in my life. And whenever possible, I will show you their reaction. So here is what Kelly texted me when she got her card. Kelly calls it happy mail, and I think that's really the perfect term. You know, everybody loves getting a pop-up card, and they're really, really fun to make. So you're going to feel really proud of yourself for making it, and they're going to feel really, really special receiving it. If you subscribe to this YouTube channel, you won't miss a single pop post video, and you can always find more ideas on my blog, karenberniston.com. Thanks for watching.